Hello and welcome to a 1v1 cast on Pale 2 for Gorge. Starting off on the top side of the map, we have Fee playing as the Hive Tyrant. On the bottom side of the map, we have Bruce Campbell playing as the Force Commander using the Elite Mod Legion of the Damned color scheme. Straight away, double homogons hit for Fee might not work out too well given that it's up against the Force Commander. The Force Commander being very good at countering melee builds with his battle cry activated and also come tier 2 when he gets the Thunder Hammer as well, being able to fight multiple melee squads at the same time by using his battle cry and just knocking back in an area or radius around him can be quite frustrating to go against so you tend to see a lot of players not building too much melee and tending not to group up as much as well against the Force Commander come tier 2. Depends if Bruce Campbell will go for those upgrades. They do cost quite a bit actually. The Teleporter and Thunder Hammer alone costing 75 power in tier 2 just for those. And then you need to include the Artificer's Armor as well which gives us another 25. Making your Force Commander cost over well, about 100 power along with plenty of requisition. But can be worth it to actually counter the certain builds. You're ready, Bruce Campbell making use of the buildings here on the map here. Tactical Marines entering a building, scouts entering a building, and Fee unable to actually do too much about it. Spore Mines and Barb Strangler Warriors are the counter here for Tyranids to clear buildings out. The Spore Mines costing 100 requisition and 5 power can be a bit costly to clear out buildings, especially if it's got tactical marines or something quite tanky inside the building here. So Fee is just going to have to give up a little bit of map control for now in order to save on a bit of cost here and already the crippling poison can be used here for these termagons with the toxin sack upgrade normally do see a tier 1.5 unit out of tyranid players before going for any upgrades on the homagons or termagons here but as well the adrenal glands also these homagons here these starting units are going to have so much early potency in comparison to bruce campbell who's not bought any tier 1 up or tier 1 upgrades on his units has gone straight for a devastator squad so both players spending about the same amount of power so far, but the Crippling Poison already coming in here on the Force Commander, slowing his speed down by 90%. Termagons able to kite away here, Homagons are going to back away, and the Hive Tyrant is coming in as well. But the Battle Cry is now activated, and these Homagons will struggle to fight that Force Commander. But the Force Commander is currently unsupported here, some more Homagons come in and force off these Tactical Marines, but at the same time, these Scouts have been gaining so much map control here for Bruce Campbell. Force Commander able to carry on that tanking, even forcing off the Homogons here. Scouts getting the fast sergeant here. Not going to be in time to throw any retreat grenades onto those Homogons there. But we'll be able to throw some retreating grenades later. It's very difficult to actually wipe a squad of Homogons or Termogons, given how spread out the models are and given how many models there actually are. It's very difficult to get a grenade to land on all the models when they're trying to retreat away in the Hive Tyrant here. Going to retreat doesn't want to take too much damage. Going to retreat, come out of base very quickly rather than trying to wiggle his way out, taking a lot of damage and then going back to base anyways. And in response to the Devastators on the map, some Ravens are on the way here for Fee. Could always, could always use the Extended Carapace on the Hive Tyrant to actually charge in instead. The Ravens are a bit of a safer choice since the charge you're still vulnerable to damage when you're charging in. Same with Ravens actually when they're burrowing, but the Barrow is a longer ranged ability and allows them to knock back Devastators towards your army so you can actually try and get a snipe onto those Devastators, making it a bit more risky for the enemy opponent to have the Devastators set so far forward and rely on them too much means that they will need to have their army as well seen around those Devastators if they want to protect those Devastators. And already Bruce Campbell going to be following up here with some distortion or distortion units of his own, some ASM going to be very useful at jumping onto these ranged homogons here. Although I'm not sure about the ASM choice given that it's two squads of homogons and only one squad of homogons here. If he had a larger ranged force, I would say that the ASMs would be a really good choice here. But in tier 1, the ASMs might struggle without that merciless strike to knock back these double homogons. The double homogons could easily get surrounded onto those ASM and be quite a pain for them to actually deal with. And the extended carapace is already getting built onto that hive turret as well. So we will see him charging into these devastators later in the ASM. Now making an appearance, these raveners are getting a little bit low, taking a model loss there as well. And the ASM going to be engaged in those ravenous but the Ravners retreating away before they take any damage whatsoever there. Do not want to engage those ASMs when they are model down and even then still don't really want to engage those ASMs since the ASMs could potentially win against them especially if they land a special against those Ravners and well whoever loses the model first will lose the engagement. And Ravners with plenty of homogon support around the map there 
do want to be a bit careful here. And the Homegun is trying to flank these Devastators here, nearly outside the Ark. A couple of models are still inside the Ark, and the ASMs are going to be engaging here, preventing these Homegons from tying up these Devastators. But the Hive Tyrant will charge in himself. Devastators are going to get forced off here. The Hive Tyrant, without a weapon, will not be doing too much damage to those Devastators. We're doing 45 melee DPS with his standard claw, and the Force Commander just died here and was repurchased. Went down here to some Pummel Gods. There's even an extra generator here for Bruce Campbell, which Fee has spotted. And should be getting a little bit worried that he is still only on two generators, and Bruce Campbell is on four generators toast. Bruce Campbell should have the tech advantage here. And in fact, there's 125 power compared to Fee, who's only on 60 power right now, but Bruce Campbell very low on requisition. Fee very high on requisition here. So both players might end up taking to tier 2 at the exact same time, given that both players have an imbalanced economy here. The fee with quite high re requisition resource income here. 321 in comparison to Bruce Campbell's 300 or 257, sorry. But fee definitely lacking on the power here. 39 power income versus a 69. And some warriors even getting purchased here for fee actually cancels those warriors, which is a good idea because he has spent quite a lot in tier 1 and he does not have the power income to actually keep up with Bruce Campbell right now. Needs to be very careful. Grenade getting thrown down here. Going to catch out one squad of homogons here, killing about six to seven models there. And the force commander with those specials as well. These homogons are doing so much damage. But being hit by that grenade though prevents them from doing too much. These scouts though are trying to get away there. They're able to get away there with full models here. The Homogons though are unable to do too much. They were they are doing a lot of damage here, but with the grenade, with the battle cry activated and force command, they're just unable to do the damage that they can do potentially, especially with these adrenal glands as well. In fact, with the Homogons without those adrenal glands, they may have even gone down to that grenade along with the force commander hitting on them in retreat. And Bruce Campbell is going to be the first person to tier 2 Mima Fee, only 3 power away from tier 2, really needs to start taking up soon so he doesn't end up too far behind it. Bruce Campbell in terms of technology and Ravener is going to be bashing this power node here. They might even try and capture the journey to farm for themselves, realizing that Bruce Campbell doesn't actually have many units in the area. In fact, the only units that he has in the area to defend his power farm is his scouts. So Fee might be able to spot that and see that he's got units on the left hand side, ASM, devs in mid, tactical marines retreating away, might be able to take the generator farm for himself and you can see the hive tyrant going in now for a capture of his own, might try and get that generator farm, might be able to try and hold it for a little bit and actually catch up to Bruce Campbell in terms of power generated throughout this game. Very nice grenade though to actually predict where the Ravenous are going to go. When the Ravenous do bury, you can actually see the ground start to crack a little bit. So you know exactly where the Ravenous are going to go. And that was a nice grenade to take down a model in an otherwise unfortunate situation where the Devastators do get forced off. And the ASM going to be engaging his guns here, but the crippling poison is going to lock them down in place, slowing their movement speed down to just 10% here. And these guns getting tied up here by the Force Commander. Force Commander will be able to force off these home guns, and the home guns are unable to do too much against the Force Commander himself. Able to fight the ASMs, but not on the amount of models that they're on right now. In fact, they should just back out of this fight because right now they're just going to bleed models and they're not actually doing it too much, especially with the Hive Tyrant already backing out that engagement here. Meanwhile, a set of home guns are on that right hand side doing some capturing while all this fighting goes on, and a very quick Tyrant guy going to be coming out for Fee. Meanwhile, for Bruce Campbell, it's going to be a very fast Tactical Marine Sergeant as well to lead the squad. Tactical Marine Sergeant doing about similar DPS to the rest of the Tactical Marines, but it does have the Chainsword as well for a better melee combat, and also has the ability, and they shall know no fear, allowing you to take a reduced 50% damage, allowing suppression immunity, and also allowing you to have a 50% chance with special units on retreats, and for the Emperor getting used onto the scouts here, but no grenade being thrown. Normally you only see 40 Emperor used on scouts if they have either the shotguns or if they're about to throw a grenade onto an enemy unit, such as a setup team, for a better chance of wiping it since that 25% damage does affect the scout grenade ability as well as their regular default weapon damage as well. The Devastator sets up here, forcing these Termagons away, and Bruce Campbell going to be coming out here with a Drenor. At the same time, Fee also has a Tyrant Guard that's just come out of base for himself as well. And the Dreadnought is going to be upgrading to the Assault Cannon here, meaning that the Tyrant Guard should be able to fight the Dreadnought fairly easily if it gets tied up in melee combat by the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought losing its melee resistance when upgrading to an Assault Cannon here 
will definitely struggle against any kind of heavy melee whatsoever. Raven is going to be burned in, going to be landing onto these tactical marines here, but the Devastators forced to reset up, not having that angle apparently. And Tyrant Guard does need to be careful of those tactical marine squad. Needs to be, having, be careful of the tactical marines in general. The plasma gun is going to be very effective since that Tyrant Guard is super heavy infantry. Humble Guns as well, trying to tie up these tactical space marines as well. But the drone is firing away at them. ASM is down to just well, surprisingly lasting with all their models alive here. The assault barrage is going to go down here, but not actually hitting anything whatsoever here. Tactical Marines might lose a model here. Be very surprised if Bruce Campbell got, so gets away here without a single model loss. That's very unfortunate there for Feed. ASM and Tactical Marines were both very low and getting away there with full models here. And the Homogons gained four stuff here by that Salt Cannon Dreadnought, but the Dreadnought is having to back away here from the Tyrant Guard. Tyrant Guard doing nearly 100 heavy melee DPS and with no melee resistance whatsoever is going to be taking the full brunt of that damage to the Hive Terror. May even consider getting a Venom Cannon as well as more AV support because this Dreadnought will be quite annoying to kill and the Tyrant Guard is going to be entering a shield wall formation here. Might not be the best idea given that there is last cannon fire on him. May even better to actually just charge out of the area and then go for a shield wall formation somewhere else. ASM is with a sergeant now. Going to be much more robust in melee combat him. The Merciless Strike should be able to fight up two squads of Homogons at the same time, assuming they land the Merciless Strike on both squads at the same time. Scouts gained four stuff here by the Ravenous Homogons in the area as well, and these Devastators will soon be four stuff as well. There is a Venom Brood now out in the field here to actually support against this Dreadnought to actually take it down and actually try and force off with some range damage on the Tyrant Guide in melee damage to keep that Dreadnought locked down. The ASMs are jumping onto this Venom Brood. The Sergeant does have a Power Sword, going to be very effective against that heavy infantry, but unable to take down a single model. Meanwhile, the ASMs are retreating away. We'll be able to get away here with full models by the looks of it. Once again, the Tyrant Guard trying to take a swing there with its melee weapon, unable to actually get any ASM models without with that single swing. And at the same time, Homogon it's getting a little bit too close there to base, and Homogons will be able to bash down this power generator, but do need to retreat straight away here, but the Dreadnought is going to engage in melee here by the looks of it. In fact, the Homogons not even retreating away whatsoever will go down here to the plasma gun on that tactical marine squad and Fee going to go in for a capture here onto this power farm once again wants that extra power economy for himself, wants to take it away from Bruce Campbell both players going to be taken up to tier 3 at the same time, 266 VPs to 339, the Assault Garage is going to go down, only catching up a single Venom Brood model here, Tyrant Guard is trying to engage, the Hive Tyrant should consider tying up that Tactical Marine Squad given that he doesn't actually have a proper melee weapon to deal with this Dreadnought here, the last cannon firing away here at the Tyrant Guard, this Tyrant Guard is most likely going to go down here, but the Venom Brood might be able to take down this Dreadnought, it is solo, the Venom Brood are trying to move forward, they do have fire and move, but are they fast enough to catch up to this Dreadnought, 25 HP is getting repaired, the Venom Brood able to take it down here, the ASM going to be able to tie up these Termagons, so may even kill them, the Shield Wall Formation is entered here, the last cannon doesn't look like it's got a firing arc on it, and a nice grenade here from the Scouts, able to force off the Venom Brood and Ravenous with a single grenade here, and the last cannon says up once again, but I believe this rock here is a shot blocker, and a Last Cannon is unable to actually fire away at a Tyrant Guard here, so that Tyrant Guard should be able to live overall if it manages to get enough energy to charge out of there. Or if it tries to tie up the Devastator Squad. Problem is, if it ties up the Devastator Squad and it's not in the Shield Wall Formation, the Plasma Gun on these Tactical Marines is going to be very effective against the Super Heavy Infantry that this Tyrant Guard has, but it's now on nearly a thousand HP here, which might be enough for it to survive and walk away, but at the same time if he can always wait for the re remainder of his units here in base to come out of base and to actually jump in and help out and there's a cooldown here, could be without number, could be a warrior drop in here, going to be without number here, calling their squad of homogons and termogons at the cost of red only and able to take down a single tactical marine model here with these homogons. Bruce Campbell has been so far quite lucky not to lose any of these models in this game, but will be losing a model right there and then, and still no upgrades onto the Force Command here, which I'm quite surprised about, and I'm also surprised by the lack of upgrades from the Hive Tyrant as well, but both players now tier 3 are going to be focusing on those bigger and better units now, rather than their commanders, could even see the Terminator Force Commander here, although Bruce Campbell already does have the Artificer's Armor, so I doubt we're going to see that. And Pretty sure this is just a UI, UI bug where it doesn't show the Artificer's Armor. I'm pretty sure I did see him upgraded with that. But maybe not. But the Venom Brood here. Do you need to be careful? The Plasma Gun, those tactical marines, very good against heavy infantry just as well. Super heavy infantry. 
and you do not want your Venom Brood models to be going down because of these snaps bombs. That follow up from ASM forced to disengage here against these Homogons, but these Homogons are not going to be following up here in the ASM, able to get away here with four models at 440 HP each model, averaging 110 HP there, very unfortunate there for Fee once again to not get a single model here, even though Bruce Campbell has been trying to duck out at the very last second of the engagement rather than early on and cautiously. And these Devastators are going to go and capture that power farm. A Predator is now out and the Homogons have spotted this. And the coming out with a Carnifex may even choose to upgrade it to a Venom Cannon. Carnifex may even choose to just keep it as it is since he does have a Tyrant Guard and a Venom Bruce still on the field. Also his Hive Tyrant is upgrading to the Venom Cannon as well and that should be plenty of AV. So this Carnifex could even be a Thornback or a Barb Strangler Carnifex. I don't think it's going to be a Barb Strangler Carnifex as much as Barb Strangler Carnifex does well against Space Marine because of its plasma cannon damage and that does well against heavy infantry and even does well against vehicles. I think it could be a form back here because Bruce Campbell doesn't actually have anything to really counter a form back other than the Devastators with the last cannon. The form back can always just charge in, you can always call in rippers as well, add the card effects and rippers do slow down with each bite, each bite on the Predator will slow down by 3%. Same time Bruce Campbell. 418 red, could see an orbs of environment soon, could even see some terminators called in once he does have enough resources here, and it's going to be a fawn back card effects, the melee variant comes with melee resistance, comes with the ability to spawn rippers here, and also gives an extra 300 HP, this card effects 1650 HP of vehicle armor, it's going to be very tough here for Bruce Campbell to actually deal with here, card effects so far not been touched in, a predator is missing his shots here, so the card effects, a predator is going in, what is it doing here, rear armor hits here from the hive tyrant, from the card effects, from the tyrant guard as well, that's heavy melee and that venom cannon damage here, or armor piercing damage here, nah, Predator was extremely short lived here. ASM going to be disengaging from that engagement here. And Devastator is going to get run over by the Carnifex and even going to lose a model just to the melee charge. The Force Commander still only without Artificer's armor. We'll need to consider some more upgrades potentially at some point. We'll also need to consider getting in some Assault Terminators to actually deal with the Carnifex since that Predator has now gone down. Devastators are off the field. Terminators, the Assault Terminator variant should be able to stand up against a melee Carnifex. They do about 200 heavy melee DPS I believe along with 40 Emperor to actually boost their damage by a further 25% and there's 5400 HP of super heavy infantry as well which should be more than enough to remain in the engagement here given that Fee doesn't really have anything in terms of countering super heavy infantry and the Assault Terminator is now out in the field here you can even consider getting a Librarian here so you can actually warp these Terminators out in case they get in trouble using the Gate of Infinity here but Ravenous forced away the Hive Turret regrouping mid. Looks like another without number was called down here as well in the mid. So Fee bolstering his army with more Termagons, with more Homogons, and the Carnifex is in mid still with that Tyrant Guard. And Tyrant Guard with the Carnifex is definitely going to be a tough challenge for these Assault Terminators to face. But the Brunest is going to go down at the very beginning of the engagement. ASM is going to engage those Termagons here, and the Tyrant Guard is going to lead the charge in against these Terminators here by charging in and running them over. And the Carnifex now doing the same thing, but only catching out a single model. And Hive Tyrant using that Venom Cannon to try and focus down these Terminators. The Venom Cannon doing decent damage against Super Heavy Infantry. It's just not the most accurate here. And the Hive Tyrant going to be charging in himself as well. Did, where did the Devil Homogons though? The Devil Homogons need to actually jump into a fight. Or these Homogons particularly need to jump into a fight. The Tyrant Guard entering that Shield Wall formation. But Heavy Melee does not care about Vehicle Armor. Heavy Melee will still do 50% damage to Heavy. Or to just Vehicle Armor, sorry. Venom Brew going to be losing the model here, going to be losing a second model here, the Plasma Gun on these Tactical Marines is decimating them, these Tactical Marines are getting a little bit low and the Terminators are forced to teleport away here, down to just two out of three models here, the Carnifex was able to take down one, some Rippers are coming in, but Rippers do not slow down Super Heavy Infantry, in fact it's going to be a dead Terminal Squad because they did not retreat away in time, Devastators with a last cannon in the area, grenade game thrown down, a little bit too close to that Terminator Squad, but at the same time doing some decent damage though to those Rippers and this Devastator Squad is so low 
low, might even go down. 2 HP, one more hit, and it will go down, but the Helmet Gods do not chase it down, and it will live over all the Raveners are running away. The Carnifex is jumping back into the fight. The Hive Tyrant is also here. The charge going in onto the Terminator. Scouts getting caught out here by the Domino knockback. May even go down here to these Helmet Gods. Not retreating away in time. ASM disengaging here. Scouts now down. There should be no vehicles here for Bruce Campbell because he has no repair support whatsoever. And the Terminator is trying to get away. In fact, there's going to be a Razorback on the field here. I don't think this Razorback is going to last too long against the mounds of AV here that Fee has. That Venom Cannon on the Hive Tyrant doing some work here. And even laying the Calm Effects melee it down. It will die in this engagement. 148 to 253. Bruce Campbell in a good position in terms of VPs being over 100 VPs ahead. But that Calm Effects is just tearing everything up here. Level 2 might even take down the Sergeant Base attack just got cancelled there and that hive turret is getting caught out right now decides to charge away the force commander with a power fist now going to be very effective against vehicles effective against all targets and the hive turret able to just pop the sergeant there he just died as the first to hit from that venom cannon and there is a second to form that can effects as well out for feet he means business here with the amounts of melee that he's got able to take down another asm model that force command with the power fist it's going to be a bit overwhelmed with two can effects on the field now here decides to actually try and fight this one Carnifex in particular. I don't think Flesh Over Steel does work against Carnifexes because they're not vehicles as such, they're biological. So that's why we've not seen a Flesh Over Steel get used yet on that Force Commander. But the Power Fist will be a very good target against all Tyranid units here. And given that Fee does not actually have any Homogons in terms of he has one squad of Homogons here. Doesn't need any AoE melee as such. Although with these Rippers here, a Thunder Hammer might not be like, such a bad idea. But now he's got the Power Fist and he's going to help out against those Khan effects along with the Terminators trying to melee him down. But these Terminators will be outmatched against the two melee Khan effects. really needs these Devastators to be on the field to help out here with the range support and may even need some other stuff as well some other sources of AV but it's a triple cap here for Fee and he is quickly catching up to Bruce Campbell in terms of VPs right now with a Venom Brood trashing down that Jerry's a farm these rippers are buying a lot of time in mid 148 VPs to 166 here that triple cap is really starting to hurt Bruce Campbell now. It's starting to make his way here with the Force Commander here. Forces that Venom Brood off, but already two generators have gone down without number used once again here. More Termagons and Homagons to join the swarm. And Devastator is going to get charged in by that Carnifex here. I believe the charge does power melee as well, so it's actually very good against heavy infantry. In fact, Terminators forced to teleport away. These ASMs now level 4 though, but also forced to jump away at the same time. The Homogons chasing in a little bit too far, very greedy here. For these tactical space marines will not be able to get them though. And these Terminators are very low and will need to sit in base here for quite some time, down to just 1,600 HP on a third of their health. That they really need. They need to be on full health. They want to fight these Khan effects. These Khan effects as well, taking quite a bit of damage here, down to about half health in total for both of them. We need to be careful on that next engagement. But Devastator is pushing in here, but the Khan effects is with the Rippers spawn. There's just Rippers everywhere, and Rippers immune to suppression, very tiny infantry, meaning that ranged units actually really struggle to actually hit them. Vanguard Veteran upgrade coming in. I'm not sure about this choice here. The ASM were level 4 and that can't affect charging. Even running over his own rippers here that forces the Devastators off. But the Vanguard Veterans, the ASM were level 4. There was no need to upgrade to those Vanguards here. And the Triple Cap has done so much damage to the VPs here. Charging against those Vanguards as well. The Terminators down to just a single model here, decides to teleport away, but Bruce Campbell still on a 2 to 1 cap here, unable to actually push out of his own base here, really, unable to push into that mid VP. These fallen back Khan effects are doing so much work here, and Fee keeping up on top of the capping here with the Homogons on the side here. Gonna turn it into a triple cap, but once again, these Vanguards are definitely gonna struggle with an orbital bombardment coming in, only catching out a squad of Termagons here, and those Vanguards are going to go down, the Chargers keeping them in place for so long. That Force Commander is also going to go down at the same time, getting picked up there by the Carnifex and then thrown backwards there behind it. Terminator's coming in once again though on two out of three models will be unable to stand up but the triple cap coming in though is just too painful for Bruce Campbell to handle here and he is losing VP so quick he is not able to do anything about it here and a Tyranid Swarm is going to overwhelm Bruce Campbell here. The Tyranids will overwhelm the Space Marines today.